Adrian, if I could ask, sort of imagining a time when COVID is more under control, whether that's because of testing, whether that's because of vaccines, um, do you think that the, the care sector should be aiming for a return to normal, kind of what was going on in the you know, beginning of this year? Um, or do you think that, that really there are kind of bigger changes it could be making to contribute more towards people's well-being, people's independence? Well, a couple of, uh, a couple of things um, that we don't want to go back to, um, I think, is a very fragmented and confrontational set of relationships within the sector. So I was going to hear uh, Glyn talking about um, that Pan Wales um, Social Care Forum um, oh, sorry, Care Forum Wales uh, WhatsApp. I, I also think it's been brilliant during the, the pandemic that the Care Forum Wales has been working closely with Camor Cymru, representing uh, uh, housing-related care and support, and the Wales Council for Voluntary Action. And all, if you like, all of that range of provider umbrella bodies has been working on a weekly basis with Welsh Local Government Association and, uh, and Welsh Government to see through you know, the COVID challenges. Um, I think my reflection is, you know, every week is always a challenge in social care uh, and we should not stop doing those, having those collaborative meetings at the highest level and, and making things better just because the virus has, uh, has gone away. I think it's been a, a, a great example of, of something good happening. Um, I think if, if, I, if it doesn't sound too uh, mercenary and, and flippant, I think it's been absolutely brilliant that local authorities have actually paid up uh, right at the start of the financial year uh, the amounts required to pay, you know, uh, wage uplifts and so on. Because you know, in previous years, we some of us have had to wait well into the year to get the funding to cover a statutory pay uplift requirement. Uh, this time, with COVID breathing down our necks and everybody realizing how important care is, the money's come through quickly. Um, and so, I think again that that sort of more responsive, financially friendly relationship between funders and, and care providers would be great to see contained. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of, you know, future, future developments and not going back to the new normal, I, I guess I would say, you know, we were already on a journey in, in Wales to, um, to transform social care, for, uh, to use a bit of a jargon. I mean, we've got the Social Services and Wellbeing Act uh, and the Future Generations Act, which are both brilliant pieces of legislation, um, wanting to see public services, and in particularly uh, the one in, in terms of social care, based on clear principles, you know, principles whereby uh, the, the support provider and commissioner are having a real meaningful conversation as equals with the people receiving uh, the service, and those services are shaped by that, by that dialogue. Um, there's, uh, there's a principle about prevention, you know, that you don't just sort of keep pouring money into, uh, into dealing with crises, but actually you step back and see where can you, where could we invest backstream, as it were, of the crisis in order to prevent that happening or becoming coming so bad. And some aspects of the care system, you know, are, are not designed to um, reinforce or incentivize the promotion of, of people's independence. It's almost in the provider's interest to keep them dependent so that they keep getting the hours and they keep getting the money. Well, this is this is this is silly. So we need we need to shift the system into being more preventative. Um, and you know, the um, the prevention agenda also sort of inevitably takes you in the direction about talking um, uh, about unpaid assets, you know, about about families and friends and, and neighbors. We've seen great examples of the community stepping up in, in COVID, but actually we need to find a way in which the social care system is, is encouraging more and more community self-help activity rather than just only focusing on, you know, we've got a crisis, we've got to pay for it, someone's needs are off the scale, um, so, so they get the service. Well, you know, let's... Let's be let's be cleverer, and we've got the legislation as the platform to do to do that. It's really interesting that the, those you know some of those pieces of legislation have really set a bit of a direction of travel, and obviously COVID has come along and and um, in some ways thrown a little bit of a spanner in the works. But it's really it is interesting to hear all of you mention that there are some positive lessons coming out of that. 